Hello, and welcome to Obscure Offerings, a series in which I attempt to briefly discuss little-known locomotives or multiple units in the form of a mini-documentary. In today's episode, we will be discussing the Class 16 diesel locomotive, otherwise known as the North British Type 1. The Class 16 was designed by the North British Locomotive Company of Scotland and built in 1958, though this was three years after British Railways had ordered them. They were ordered as part of BR's pilot scheme and numbered from D8400 to D8409, so yes, only 10 of them were built. The idea was that if these locomotives proved successful, it could lead to follow-on orders, as was the case with the similar-looking BTH Type 1 or Class 15. These things initially didn't carry the Class 16 designation. It was a TOPS classification introduced in the late 1960s, with TOPS standing for Total Operations Processing System. So initially, the locomotives were called North British Type 1s, but in all honesty, I prefer to call them Class 16s. The Class 16s were somewhat unusual amongst British diesels, in the sense that they adopted the so-called road switcher layout, with the cab set back from the front behind a high nose. This layout can be found on several other locomotives, examples including the Elko RS11, EMD G12, known in New Zealand as the DA class, GMD GMD1, and the NZR DI class. But in the case of the class 15 and 16 locomotives, they were unpopular with drivers due to their poor visibility, though it was largely the same as a steam locomotive, especially when running in reverse. The much more successful Class 20s, aka Choppers, had a similar problem, but this really only applied when they were going in reverse. Returning to the Class 16s, these locomotives came in at a length of 12.95 metres, or as I would say, 12.95, width of 2.654 metres and height of 3.861 metres. Power was supplied by a Paxman 16 YHXL Prime Mover and a GEC WT881 generator, but despite the high cylinder count, the power units only put out 800 horsepower. Incidentally, the Class 15s used that very same Paxman unit, but they turned out to be more successful. North British was a company known for their vast output of steam locomotives, both for domestic and international service. Examples of the latter include the South African Railways 15F and Victorian Railways R Class. Consequently, they didn't have much experience with building diesels, though the 16s weren't actually their first attempt in this field. Indeed, the 16s were based on the prototype number 10800 from 1950 though this engine is perhaps better known by its nickname, Hawk. These engines had some unique design features by diesel standards, such as the spoked wheels and a main frame running the entire length of the locomotive. The latter practice was more in line with steam engines, with MBL finding it difficult to translate their skills to newer diesel and electric designs. Said main frames were carried on two four-wheel bogies, making for a bobo wheel arrangement. As the Class 16s were intended for freight service, they never carried train heating equipment. 
The class leader, D8400, didn't emerge from Queen's Park Works in Glasgow until 1958, by which time it was over a year behind schedule. This was due to the complicated construction process, but the whole class was in service by the end of the year. Initially, the MBL Type 1s were allocated to Devon's Roadshed in London, where they were evaluated against rival designs such as the aforementioned Class 15. And not long after arriving, the 16s were reallocated to Stratford, where they remained for the rest of their working lives. I should also mention that I'm not referring to the Stratford in New Zealand, but rather the Stratford in East London. Now while the 15s and 16s were both plagued with mechanical problems all their lives, the 16s were the less successful of the two. Inadequate ventilation resulted in frequent engine seizures, and there was often coolant contamination due to cylinder head failure. Not helping the situation was the locomotive's non-standard red circle multiple working system, which made them incompatible with engines that had the more common blue star system. The 16s were all painted in plain BR Brunswick green with the late crest unusually going on the long hood instead of the cab. Surprisingly, none of them survived long enough to receive the BR double arrow logo, let alone a full repaint in BR blue. The closest they ever got was receiving full yellow ends, though I think they looked better with the small yellow panels. Owing to their terrible reliability, but despite being barely 10 years old, the Class 16s were early candidates for withdrawal, the whole class was withdrawn between February and September 1968, and by the end of 1969, the Class 16s had all been cut up for scrap, with none of them surviving into preservation. This presented us with the unusual historical note of a British diesel class that never survived long enough to carry tops numbers, such as 16001, let alone repainted in BR Blue. Fortunately, the story of the Class 16 ends on a positive note, of sorts, for in the early 2010s, Hellion revived the class as a 00 scale model. As per the real thing, the models are only available in BR Green, but they do come in a good few variants with plain green, or you can choose from three different yellow panel types. On a personal note, I first discovered the Class 16s in a book that I used to rent from the local library. I think it was called The Rise and Fall of British Railways, Mainline Diesel Locomotives, but don't quote me on that. More recently, in July 2022, I managed to buy a second-hand Hellion Class 16 from Hattons, with mine being number D8404 with the unique Stratford-style yellow panels, though for whatever reason the previous owner has painted over these yellow panels. Given how much I like the theme of early British diesels, I'm tempted to get another Class 16, but curiously they're all limited editions of only 750 units each thus making the Class 16 models quite rare. If you'd like to know a bit more about these models, I suggest checking out Jennifer Kirk's video on the subject. In that video, she unboxes and reviews a variant of D8407 that has the full yellow ends. And that was the history of the British Rail Class 16. To summarise, they were a small class built by a company that didn't have much experience with diesels, and were very short-lived owing to a number of serious mechanical issues. So with all that being said, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about a little-known British diesel. Feel free to check out the previous episodes in this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Alright, take care everyone.